what's up everyone welcome back to the channel that's right guys you read that title correctly this is a review on the govi lights i installed five months ago on my home i purposely did a few things on my install to steer away from how govi recommends it and how i install for my clients so with the other govi videos i've published and what i'm about to show you i hope i can help you on your next govi light purchase and install if you're finding this content useful hit that like button subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell notifications so let's jump into it this is the direction of how i plan my install i will be exiting on the top right of the attic then up the soffit and back into the attic on the left side the 12 foot extension will run inside the attic down to the left side bottom i will then proceed in sequence with my cut full strands from left to right since i have that recessed gable at the top i decided to mount my power adapter and controller in my attic with the provided extra VHB 3M pads, I placed the two under the power adapter and pasted it near my attic door. To secure the wire to the outlet, I will be using a DeWalt cordless cable stapler. I recommend this tool for this task since it beats having to hold a staple with my finger and hammering it in. You also risk hitting the wire. Take a look at how easy and precise the tool is. I will be placing a link to this product in the description. Now that we have it anchored down on one side, let's take care of the other side to the outlet. This wire shown is from the controller. Here is where I'm exiting the attic. A 3 quarter inch bit was used to core out from both sides. This was one area I was hesitant to splice as I was new to the Govi product. So the manufacturer connections were left as is. Then I used some outdoor silicone to seal that hole. Look here. As described in my latest Gobi video, we recommend two clips at each end light so that it is secure from both sides and keeps the light straight. This light was purposely left without a brad nail to show exactly why we install each light with a clip and two brad anchors moving forward with all installs. Here we're entering back into the attic and the hole was sealed. As I enter into the attic, a small 3 foot custom cord needed to be added to that 12 foot extension. I had drop off connections from a previous job so I used them here. Well if you're just doing one install that option won't be available so splicing will need to happen here. So the 12 foot extension is ran down the side of the framing and down to the side of the house. Here is a good example if we decide to run lights or a 12 foot extension on top of the shingles instead of splicing. You will be left with wasting one full light strand to make your jump. And here is that 12 foot extension. You either will be coming up short or have a white strand laying across your shingles. Something I would like to point out about this tiny box on the 12 foot extension. Do not cut this off. This helps drive the voltage to the bottom or top jumps. Here I exit from my attic to the bottom soffit. This is a 3 quarter inch hole. 
perfect example to seal around this area when your install is complete. I soldered my jumps at this location and placed electrical tape over it. I will be switching this out to the waterproof heat shrink sleeves. The custom wire is ran underneath the flashing and off to the side. This is a perfect example of what your lights will look like if you decide not to splice them. You can turn the lights off in the advanced settings but cannot turn them off in the Gobi preset scenes. Here are the product dimensions. 